really scraping the bottom of the barrel with these. One of these days, I'm going to run out of intro ideas. Even that one I had to outsource. Thanks, David. Any hoozy. Hi, I'm Snoopy, and today we're going to be expanding on the last video, sorta, where I ran an operating system called Nopix on a slot 1 400 megahertz Pentium 2 among Super other things. Furries. Everyone thinks I'm a furry now. This is a problem. I'm not a furry. I'm a furry enthusiast. It's different. Anyways, going off that, I thought it would be interesting if we stepped it up a bit. And by stepped it up, I mean stepped it down. Because instead of a Pentium 2, we're going to be using a Pentium 1. Or as it was advertised, an Intel Pentium. This CPU is older than the Pentium Pro. And now, some of you might be thinking, wait, Nopix doesn't even run on i586 microprocessors. And you're right, despite Nopix saying it's compatible with i386, despite not actually being compatible with i386. So we will instead be using Alpine. Again! This is my third Alpine video. Which I didn't even know was compatible with the CPUs this old, till DistroHopper brought it to my attention in the hellish wasteland known as my Discord server. Which I encourage you to stay very, very far away from. But essentially, he sent a video by NTDev where they show Alpine running on a 16 megahertz i486SX. Compared to that, this 133 megahertz Intel Pentium is downright speedy. We've even got a floating point unit. Fancy. So because of that, I think we can get pretty far with this. But before we do that, I bet you're wondering, well, how slow is the CPU? Well, before recording, I tried Half-Life. The first one, and it ran at like 2 FPS. Well, I thought, okay, let me go try some other graphics modes, right? And it never loaded again. Look at this person, that is the face of impatience. He's like, bruh, I'm only supposed to be here for like 30 seconds, what the fuck? This shit can't even run quick too! Anyways, I like this one's 98 install, so I'm like, put this in there, so, uh... I just gotta get all this camera shit off the top. Definitely not planning a camera video or anything. Definitely not. No, no, definitely not. Yeah, no, no, yeah, okay, cool. Now this part's fun. Because this computer is slightly ACPI, and by slightly I mean funny chipset reasons, it basically won't turn off fully because AT, and this is also like sort of an ATX motherboard. So when the light turns off, I need to help it and turn off the power for it. Okay, some might think this is cursed, but hear me out, right? With just a single screw, look at that. Okay, I'm just gonna remove these now. Now, as some of you might know, these cases are a real pain in the ass. Because unlike modern cases where they have two side panels, maybe three sometimes, I don't know. This one has one side panel. All of the side panel, actually. It is all one piece, and it covers all the sides. Well, okay, three out of four, but still. Which means I need to... Sorry about the Midwest noises, by the way. Yeah, I mean, Cicada needs to make more Cicada, I guess. So they just kind of do that. Anyway, so I'm going to remove this hard drive. It's actually quite easy. You just got to follow the good old trick of not actually screw it in. No jumper equals slave. And yeah, so it needs to be master. Not saying it. Not saying it. Not saying it. I was going to say I could just take one from here, but it doesn't even have one. No jumper means master on this one. Do I not have a spare jumper around here? Damn it! Hey, I found one. Good and secure. Why is there a microphone in here? And I just remembered I'm gonna have to go get that accursed PCI Ethernet adapter and put that in here because Alpine is actually a networked installer, so I kinda need one of those. I'll be back. I got it. It's kinda funny, all of the times I've needed a PCI network adapter, it has been this exact one. Because I only have one PCI network adapter. Look, it's even got a place to put an option ROM. Kinds that overwrite my BIOS, those are my favorite. Hopefully it doesn't cause the problems that it did. I've since made it better. It actually boots consistently now, by the way. I figured out the problem in a video that will never be released, and essentially, that entire problem was caused by not having a CMOS battery. Yeah, so um, fixed to that, put in a new CR2032, and now it boots better. So that's cool. Anyways, it's not getting at the capacitors, don't touch. 
do I use the gamer screw? Screwed in twice, that means it's better. You know, I'm starting to think now, this Voodoo 3 2000 gets like really, really hot. And since we're gonna be running Linux, and probably for quite a while to do some things, I wonder if that's maybe a very bad thing. Wait a minute. This card has holes. And as we all know, when there is a hole, there is a way. <laughs> I have created a monster. And now with the holes thoroughly used, I'm gonna go uh, put it back in the computer and plug it in, I guess. What's this Pentium 2 doing here? Hmm. Hey, that's like actually not any louder. Nice. It's gotta put the metal side panel back on. God fucking damn it. Yes, I'm putting them back because fuck you. And it won't have anything to boot off of because we don't have anything in the diskette drives. But I do want to see if it's if it's detecting the hard drive, and it is, that's good. So let's make sure the hard disk is working properly. Um, so let's uh, put in a DOS boot disk, I guess. Could have thought this through a little bit more. Why is it sticky? Oh god. Nice. So now let's see here. Uh, so this drive should be formatted. And it's not. That's a great sign. So let's try F disk then. So we're going to want to display partition information. Oh god. Okay, so let's make a new partition then. There's nothing important on this drive, so... Well, I guess I did want the drive to be working correctly. It looks like I'm gonna get my fucking wish. God damn it! Uh, yes? Again? Are you fucking me right now? This doesn't work. I'm gonna be pissed. Okay, C. That's not how you do that. C. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, um... That's definitely not a problem. <laughs> no, definitely not a <laughs> Oh god. It's working fine, so let's move on to booting Alpine, shall we? And before we do this, we should probably uh, put in an Ethernet cable into the network card so that it can access the internet. That would make sense. Uh, probably should have done that earlier, but I'm just now remembering. Yay. Anyways, do you know how you shut down in DOS? Like that, there is no shutdown command, it's weird. Just gotta unplug this for my PS3. Definitely didn't play through the entirety of MGR through a fucking VCR. In fact, the same VCR as that stupid capture setup. In fact, that exact capture setup in that video I made. Yeah, it was definitely playable. I wouldn't exactly call it a high quality gaming experience, but it was definitely playable. So since I've played through the entirety of MGR, I no longer find it funny. So that means no more MGR jokes. Okay, well maybe just one more. I'm fucking invincible! And it wasn't even fucking funny. Okay, so this is pretty easy. You just take the cable and you put it in the... It's actually really not that hard. It's gonna not push it off the fucking table. Okay, there we go. That's good. So now to boot Alpine, we need the Alpine disc, first of all. And also, we need a floppy disk. Now, not really in this case, because this motherboard is somehow new enough to support CD-ROM booting, but I like showing this off anyway, just because it's so incredible. And I think that, you know, if you like mess with these things often, you should probably have a copy of this somewhere, a plop. And essentially what this will allow us to do, is it essentially is a sort of, sort of like a third party bootloader. And it essentially allows you to boot from USB or a CD-ROM on a computer that would never support it. So yeah, it uses like a custom version of Linux or something, I don't know how it works, but the point is, is that I can come over here and there is a USB option and it works with every controller I've tried it with. You just click CD-ROM and you press enter and it boots. So you can take this out of here, we don't need it. So I might have pre-tested this a little bit, not that much, I just wanted to make sure it works. 
you can revoke my drug on one license, I guess. Um, but this is actually very strange and actually a little bit worrying in how it works. The CD-ROM drive just turned off, but don't let that fool you, it's still doing things. And if you give it a second, it's checking the hard drive for some reason, and now it is booting the CD. So it, it does take kind of a little bit of time to do that. So, you know, just something to keep in mind if you want to recreate this for some reason. And there we go, now it's booting the Linux kernel. And shortly we should see... There we go! OpenRC 0.44.1.0 starting up, Linux 5.15.55-0, LTS for i586, or Pentium class processors, like this one. It's so cool I don't need a place for the mouse. It's like, what is this pushy shit? I don't need this. And there we go, it's booted. Welcome to Alpine Linux 3.16. So let's log in. It's not the right, there you go. So now that we're here, before we start installing, going to want to make sure that everything is working properly. So first we're gonna wanna make sure the network is working. So if I do this, uh, it would appear that the network is not working. Guess I better reseed the network adapter. But I guess we can check and see if the hard disk is working and yeah, look at that. So FAT32 at 114 gigabytes, which is six gigs off the 120, which is perfect. So now it's got to halt the system and I'm gonna go fuck with the uh, network adapter, I guess. Losing my identity, wondering have I gone insane? We don't need this, right? We don't need no fucking sound card where you're going. Don't fucking ask. That's how, yeah, that's how you're supposed to do it, right? The answer is always, I'm insane. Yeah, it's good. Hi, fanboys, end my suffering here, and today we're going directly into the hell dimension, aka the Linux terminal. Bruh. You know when I said I only had one PCI network adapter? That was a lie. I was hoping it wouldn't come to this. But there is another. This thing. <laughs> Cut from the same cloth, you and I. Oh my god, guys, you're so fucking funny having it off by just, like, two centimeters. Oh my fucking god. Tonight on Femboy Tick Tip, Snoopy loses his fucking mind. Well, uh, it hasn't blown up yet, but we're also not getting any video output. This card is, like, one more billion degrees. Um, pfft, it hasn't fucking done anything. This is not a good sign. I am not above this. Uh, only problem with this, though, is that someone was a little aggressive when they took the old antenna off, so this isn't going to work, I don't think. But we can give it a try. And I have another antenna, and there is a little bit of the antenna connector left. And if I balance it just right... Well, it's on. That's a good sign. I Network controller, hey, there we go. <laughs> the whole non-existent antenna connector is gonna be what kills this though, just do fucking watch. Only sane things on this channel. <laughs> I am fucking bewildered. Ugh. So I am currently in TTY number two, but as you might notice, this hunk of garbage coming out of this computer is apparently working. Uh, yeah, so TTY one contains my Wi-Fi password plus all of the connections thus far, so like later me, could you do me a hot favor and not leak that, thank you? So, uh, yeah, it fucking works, apparently, so, uh, ping google.com. Uh, the response time is, I don't know if that's really good, but <laughs> it's working and that is very surprising, so now we can set up Alpine. It doesn't need the antenna. Hmm. Well, that is interesting. <laughs> I know, because it accidentally fell off, and I was like, wait, does that even work? And it apparently does, so... We don't need that. Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> zero percent packet loss with no fuck-off antenna, so I guess we're doing pretty good. Just so you know, I'm not committing any fuckery right now. I guess I just had to take my word for it, but these are my only two PCI Ethernet adapters, and neither of them appear to work, so... Uh, yeah, anyways, this is so fucking cursed. Available network interfaces are WLAN 0, 
Which one would you like to initialize? WLAN zero. Oh, really? You're gonna take me through this? I did it fucking manually. And I would just like to remind you that we are installing Linux on a Intel Pentium. So, <laughs> in case you were wondering what this video is about the, the, when, this far in, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, just in case you were curious. I like how so far this is actually proving to be, like, serviceably fast. Like, this is totally usable from a TTY standpoint. It's gonna become different if we install a desktop environment. Which, I mean, I guess I'm totally can do that because I apparently have Wi-Fi on the 1993 era AT machine, so that's cool. Generating new host- I don't need host keys! Leave it alone! I don't need SSH keys, okay? I'm good! I don't need keys! No one's gonna hack into this computer, and even if they would, I don't know what they would fucking do with it. Ooh, cool. I can use another TTY while it's installing. HTOP, let's go. Okay, regular top. You can see CPU, 71%, so it is doing something, unless that's idle speed, in which case we're fucked. Hey, we're done! <laughs> nice! That only took, like, 10 minutes. Available disks are 100. Yep, here we go. ATA, Maxter, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Which disks would you. Okay. Mm Enter where to store. Conf I didn't even press anything. Is it because I pressed enter a bunch of, time bunch of times and it's just going to keep pressing enter? I. Is that bad? Um, shouldn't we be installed on the. We're not doing anything. Okay, wait. We, we might be able to see what's going on here. Setup dash Alpine. You're not gonna make me do it again, are you? I hope not. I hope not. Oh no. I didn't press Control C or anything while doing this. Okay, F disk dash L. Did we do anything to the hard disk? <sighs> okay, we're fucking back. I think the problem was I didn't actually type in what disk it needed because it messed up everything. How would you like to use it? S Question mark, please. Uh, um, sis it is. I like sis. I bet choosing none just made it quit <laughs> the fucking... Oh, man. That would be funny. And we are now getting hard disk access. I don't know if you can see that, but we're definitely getting some access. That's for sure. At least this means the drive's working. If this is the entire system, I see this taking at least a little while. <laughs> And it's done installing, so now we can reboot. Or just press the reset button. Eject the optical media, and supposedly, with any sort of luck, we will boot into Alpine. Let's see, is it gonna boot? Oh my goodness. Alpine will be booted. Oh, this is so good. Nice. Oh, that's so cool. Loading hardware drivers. It takes kind of a long time on basically all the same stuff it did on the CD. But the CD is right here, so we're booting off the hard drive. That's that's definitely for sure. Nice! It's funny that it actually repeats the Mach-D, because I'm thinking, like, the installation script is basically just it configures packages and then copies whatever's in RAM onto the hard disk. But I don't really know that for sure. So how would we know if the Wi-Fi is working? So uh, let's see here. So ping google.com. Nice. That fucking response time, though. <laughs> nice. Okay, so if that works, let's do apk add. Now, what's a package that would exist? Uh, NeoFetch, maybe. Which you might not be in the pseudo user group. No. So we're going to want to su into root. Perhaps not as, you know, soft sounding as Ubuntu's terminal beep, but still, it's got its charm. Hmm. Unable to select packages. No such package. Hmm. Okay. What about screen fetch? Surely you've got this one. Come on now. I think I need to do the thing with the package lists again. Uh, let me try that. We are... We are extremely bare bones right now. Nano isn't even installed. So... Um... No Vim! The hell you expect me to edit stuff when... Okay, cool. We're good. We installed a package on a fucking Pentium! Guys! It's a... Ah, that's so good! Okay, so we're gonna want all of the stuff. I do not care about viruses. I, um, okay, maybe, maybe stay out of the edge stuff, though. Edge later. Community. Okay, so now it's fetching the, uh, APK index. 
So this is like pseudo apt updating on apt, I'm guessing. But what I'm getting is that APK is much, much, much more efficient than apt because of the fact we're actually able to download things unlike on the Pentium 2, which by the way, is m multiple magnitudes faster than this CPU. And yet it's apparently running just fine. Are you telling me on this fucking Pentium we're going to be able to run NeoFetch? <laughs> oh my goodness, it's amazing! It's taking so fucking long! <laughs> it's taking so long! <laughs> That's beautiful! Look at it! I, it's... <laughs> it's still going! It's... Oh, pfft. It, uh, there we go, Pentium 75 through... T okay, why is it cut off, though? Do I need to auto-adjust again? God, okay, there we go, 133. You know what, just to, get the, just to get things configured correctly, I'm gonna give it some... No, oh, fuck, data for the screen. Like, see here, is it... No, there's quite a bit of space over there. Okay, you better figure that out. Um, That one... Okay, that's as close as we're going to get, I'm guessing. But look at that. Alpine version 3.1.6 for, for i586 processors. And it's running on a Pentium at 133 megahertz. For an HTOP, we don't have HTOP. Luckily, we can install HTOP because we, can, we have the power of packages now. <laughs> Installing HTOP. The, the fun part is, you know, I've, we've gone through and, like, added some packages, and so far I haven't found any binary incompatibilities. There we go. 16.9% doing absolutely fucking nothing. And 17.5 megabytes out of 236 megabytes of RAM. Which, two, 256 megabytes of RAM is, like, kind of a lot. But... Honestly, I think we're going to need it if we're going to go any farther with this. And I think it is high time we went a little bit further with this. Hi, welcome to chapter two. Sorry about the audio in the last section. For some reason, turning off image stabilization somehow made the audio turn ass. Yeah, I'm not sure how that happened. So yeah, for those who skipped forward, allow me to catch you up. After checking the disk in MS-DOS to see that it was working, we then installed Alpine, which went mostly without a hitch, except for this one time where I pressed enter too many times and to fuck the whole thing up. That was not fun. And then we ran NeoFetch, and ev that, that's where we are now. Yeah, that was about 10 minutes. 10 minutes of video. So now for some stuff that I didn't record. So I might have been a little bored. I definitely wasn't sick for three days or anything. That, di that didn't happen. But if I sound, you know, weird, you know, more weird than usual, that's probably why. My body keeps making warm, sticky stuff in response to a sickness I don't have anymore. And, you know, like, not the hot kind, the kind that makes the talking correctly thing kind of hard. But anyways, so before I go ahead and say just exactly what I did, I should probably go ahead and say that the plan had always been, after that last part where I say, what did I say? It's time we went further with this. The plan had always been, to try running a desktop environment. But at that time, I didn't know how much of an undertaking that was going to be yet. So it was actually kind of a good thing that I got sick because I tried doing a proof of concept and I figured out I was way over my head and it didn't fucking work. And it's like super interesting why, because it was our very first binary incompatibility. The reason why it wouldn't work is because the drivers for the 3DFX card always tried to load a module called GLX. I could only guess what it would do, it's like OpenGL something. It would always crash the X server initialization with the error or something to that effect. And after doing some Googling, it turns out that at some point, the Mesa driver developers decided it would be cool to make all of their drivers require SSE2. We don't even have SSE1, which just because of the reason, the TDFX drivers require SSE2 means I could have done this on my slot 1 ass Pentium 3 and it still wouldn't have fucking worked. And you know, initially I thought, okay, well that's fine, let me try a different graphics adapter, right? I have a ton of shit ass AGP graphics adapters, so I try this one, try this one, and I tried them both and they both had the same problem. And then I tried something a little bit more creative. Because it had like proper drivers for the card and shit, right? So, you know, I tried to load acceleration for them. Like, well, what about if I try loading a driver that doesn't have proper drivers for the card? 
you know, a driver that only works like well enough and doesn't even attempt to load OpenGL. And so that's what I did. Currently installed on this system is instead of the TDFX driver, which is what the 3DFX Voodoo 3 2000 would need, it is currently running the VESA driver. By the way, this same driver on these cards would still try to load OpenGL because they're NVIDIA cards. It has like partial support for OpenGL on them, apparently. But it wouldn't on this 3DFX card. It wouldn't load any sort of graphics acceleration at all, which means this takes a very long time, but as we can see, it loads the card's BIOS for some reason. Not sure why it does that. Now we can see the geometric bottom that was in the frame buffer, and now we're loaded into a desktop environment. I went with OpenBox, just like the default configuration of OpenBox, because it's like, I don't know, it seems to be pretty uh, light. And while, yes, it's running, if I take this terminal, and if I drag it, <laughs> it's, it's terrible. It's, the performance is horrible. And you know why the performance is horrible? Because we're not using the correct graphics drivers, we're using VESA drivers. All of the processing for the display of Windows, all of this drawing, is being done on the CPU. It's incredible. It is so bad. But you know what? That doesn't matter. It's working! I'm not even touching the mouse, and it's still moving. And not only did I do that, I was also still really bored while I was sick, so I thought, okay, wait a minute. Let me try compiling uwu fetch, like, directly on here instead of editing all the build stuff, right? So I went ahead and I, you know, tried running it again, the same version I ran on the Pentium 2, and it still didn't work. And so what I did is I cloned it on this computer with the shitty Wi-Fi adapter, Oh, I don't think I mentioned that. We're technically using a Wi-Fi adapter, which had the antenna oh. yoinked off, but it still works for some reason. Crazy story, you should go back and watch that. Um, anyway, and then I tried to compile it, and it didn't work. Because it turns out I, it's not good enough just to have GCC. You also need, like, GCC Plus and these things called build tools. I didn't know that. That was a fun half hour. So, uh, I got those. And now, with it actually compiled and installed... God damn it, I need a place for the mouse now. Fuck. As we can see, we are running Uwu Fetch on i586. It is beautiful, and it's like fucking working. This is so crazy. As we can see, we're only using 43 megabytes of RAM, which now you might be wondering, wait a minute. If you went ahead and you installed a desktop environment, and you installed Uwu Fetch, and everything's all working, what is the point of chapter two? We've still got some RAM left, and this computer is not suffering enough. So I think it is time we took this a little bit further. And today's taking a little bit further is brought to you by DistroHopper 39B. Yes, I'm keeping the accent. To which I'd love to give a huge thank you for doing all of the work. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, in an now deleted scene, I tried to install a desktop environment known as NSCDE, or Not So Common Desktop Environment, which is supposed to heavily resemble CDE, or Common Desktop Environment, and will fucking look at it. Wouldn't it go beautifully with this computer? And that's what I thought. And then I was horribly disappointed when there was no package. So Distro Hopper put together a package for us, so all we have to do is run a script. Because no thoughts had empty uwu. Why did I write this? So yeah, go have a look at his latest video, as of writing, talking, where he installs Hannah Montana Linux on a fucking Apple TV. Not a Mac Mini, mind you, a fucking Apple TV. Which, to be clear, he didn't ask me to say any of this, it's just like, I, I saw the video and it's like, like, I can't not talk about this. So yeah, go watch that. This is a threat. Anyways, let's run the script. You remember back when a folder named Catboys was like actually kind of pushing the envelope for this channel? Now things have gotten much worse. Anyway, so now that we have this here, you're probably wondering, wait a minute, how did you get a file that is a little bit bigger than a floppy disk on this computer? And well, let me show you, because that's actually pretty cool. So if I run rc-service, Samba start, we are now running Samba on a Pentium. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to transfer a file to this computer using SMB. We are currently getting two and a half megabytes per second. Now, you probably think that that slow speed is caused by either the IDE interface or the uh, Wi-Fi adapter with the fucked antenna. And, well, actually, it's not. Everyone, 
We have a CPU bottleneck transferring fucking files. We are pegging the CPU right now. It is 100% solid. And it's going at one megabyte per second. And as you can see, it is all because of SMB. Well, we're not helping, but so, let's, see, let's see if there's anything in here. And well, yeah, it is transferring, but I'm gonna go stop that now. Okay, so now we just need to unzip this file. So on, but Distro Hopper, you put the, this is my first time looking at this. You put, well, that makes this a little bit inconvenient. Actually, it's the script that probably does the unzipping. Okay, never mind, we're good. So now with that done, we just go into the folder, and now we got to run this.sh. Hold that thought, I should probably clean up open box, so... Now I just gotta delete this. And clear out again, and now we can run the script. Dot sh. God damn it. I did it again. How the fuck did I do it again? And now... So... <laughs> Snooping around in your app configuration, setting up usable mode for people who... <laughs> nice. This is a threat. Setting up unstable mode. It's not unusable mode, it's setting up unsta- Oh! Oh! Oh, fun. I'm scared now. APK upgrade. Hmm, okay, so what is- what is that- I don't even know what that command does. What? It's- Whoa! Ha! Oh. Scared the fuck out of me. Install is not an APK command. Mm okay. Installing dependencies. This might take 69.42 business days on a Pentium 133. Uh, yep, yep, that's about right, but, huh. Okay, well, it's doing things. It's interesting because if that install command is what installed the dependencies... Oh, I see. So that's what it's doing. It's unzipping into the USR directory. I guess we should probably see if what's going on in the script that would cause it to error like that if I can maybe figure out what it is. It will, I think. Yes. Um, so what, it, APK install, there it is right there. That's the thing that didn't work. So this bit right here, APK install, isn't the right command for that. It is actually APK add. So we saw this and now it's currently doing that. But it didn't ever do that because it's install and not add. Enter your username here. So in my case, it's root. Everything should be working. Assume you didn't get any errors earlier. On, reboots, and then start NSCDE with start NSCDE. Okay, so I still think we need those dependencies, but I guess there's nothing stopping us from trying. Yeah, might have been a couple of things knocking around in the rate queue. Sorry about that, Mr. Hard Disk. And I do not expect this to work, even if it did install dependencies correctly. So start NSCDE. This will not work. Probably. It probably won't work. Bottom, that was in the frame buffer. Nothing. Hard disk access. Black screen. And it broke. Cannot detect FWVM, FWVM2, or whatever the fuck. That means shit missing, basically. So in order to remedy this, because I don't have to run the whole thing over again, what I'm going to do is just, like, fix it on my computer and make a new batch script for installing the dependencies. So I'll just turn on Samba. Okay, I'm going to go fuck with things. Okay, so now that I've made endme.sh, which, funny enough, actually appears to have their permissions set correctly, which is surprising. So this is just that one line, but edited so that it has add instead of install. So now I should just be able to do dot slash. Hmm. Okay, so apparently not. Why is it the same color? But it doesn't have execute. I don't get that. Okay. It now has execute set, but you're not letting me run it? Oh, wait a minute. It's because I did it on Windows. It's going to be like a pain in the ass. Okay, let's see if this works. So DOS to Unix. Assuming that's installed, it is. So this should work. Install it. Oh, did I fuck it up again? Okay. I didn't make the change. Wow, I am so smart. There we go. And yes, I had it beep each and every time because I think computers should beep. That's my thing. And I spelled deploying wrong. See, I did it right. God damn it. I am so bad. Okay, so it's doing things. That's good. So now I can walk away, and I can hear when my computer's done! All computers should beep when they're done. 
Uh, that's a lot of shit. Is that bad? Connection aborted, bad signature. Ooh. I'm gonna pretend that's not a problem. Okay, this is becoming a little bit alarming. I think we might have network connection issues. Let's hope I don't need that. I probably do. It finished, and you know how I could tell it finished? It beeped. You know, the best chance of this working, let's see if we can add Python 3. Because it could be true that part of NSCDE could require Python. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm <laughs> using all the CPU getting a goddamn package. Oh, so that's interesting. So Qt5 Qt base is what, part of Python? Or did it like see that that package was incomplete so it's trying to download it again? Bad signature again. Weird. One error. Well, we've got the number down. That's a good sign? Well, what about if I try adding that again? Yeah, okay. So let's just hope we don't need that. I'm just gonna reboot for good luck and it's not gonna work. No, no, it's working this time. Okay, cool. What the fuck? Well, we're fucked. Okay, so let's hope this alpha ass edge looking kernel is okay. When I said I guess we'll edge later, that was supposed to be a joke. So before I do this, I just want to say that NSCDE, while based on a desktop environment from the 90s, it is not light. It is very, very not light. Even if this does run, it's gonna run like complete piss garbage. But I do expect to see something. We have all of the dependencies met. We have it installed. There is no reason we shouldn't see at least something. So let's uh, have a look at the fireworks, shall we? Black nothing, hard disk access, a mouse, a circle. Oh God, I, just hourglass. I'm not seeing any hard disk access, but I can't make up my mind if the- Oh my god! Whoa, wait a minute now. It's an hourglass. Oh my god! It's a box! Oh my god! And that CDE first run setup. It's- Yeah, hell yeah! Generating NSCD from color set. Oh my god! Yeah! Ah! Oh! Ooh! Oh! Ha! Oh, oh. Setting up X resources. Holy shit! Holy shit! Window, guys! Window! Oh, wow. Look at that! It's a box! Do you have any idea how long that's gonna take? So it's not doing anything, I don't think. Let me see if I can switch into another TTY. Missing font character sets. Uh, that's probably not good. Random number generator, just always use five. Come on now, why do you need random numbers? Wasn't the point of computers to have predictability? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder, will we still have what's in the frame buffer? Yes, so this is a security issue. Whenever you launch it, that's currently not launched. That's just what's in the frame buffer. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, wait a minute. Oh my god. Okay. Holy shit. This is a little unnecessary. We've got a box of nothing. Okay. So I have to right click so it sort of works like open box. Oh, X term. Hey, here we go. Okay. There's our terminal window. Oh god. You know what's not helping? This thing right here. That is definitely not helping the situation at all. In fact, if I could get this to close, I bet that we would do quite a bit better because it doesn't have to update that part of the, there we go, much better. 8% CPU usage. We're actually doing pretty good. And I can drag this window around. And you might notice it is nowhere near as horrid as open box because it's doing like the wireframe drawing thing. It's not drawing the whole window. Still uses 61% of the CPU and does that. Other than that, look at this. Updating that part of the screen so many times like that was not helping the CPU. So now we can do our thing, let's run uwu fetch in here. Okay, so while that's going, you know, I say while that's going, we've we got a single ass thread and the thread is running at like lethargic fucking speeds. Hey now, we're not using 100% of the CPU. I paid for the whole CPU, I'm gonna use the whole CPU. Oh, there it is. 
Style manager. Oh, put the window down. <laughs> ah! Okay, do you... Must you stay on top? Okay, I'll put you down here. Ooh, woo, fetch. I-586 on a Pentium. 133. Oh my god. Okay, let's see if we can change the colors now. I gotta try out this desktop environment on something a little bit more powerful. You know, marginally more powerful. Just, just a smidge. We'll do it on a Pentium 233. There we go. I kinda like the look of that, except for maybe the... Hmm, nah, that's an alright color, actually. Is this window just frozen? Or... Alright, where's Task Manager? <laughs> I have to click on the actual title bar to get the window to go to the top. That's interesting. So now it's not finishing. Do I have to restart NSCDE for it to finish? Uh, I mean, I can do that. Power. Maybe that might not be what that does. It might be like power options as in like sleep and stuff. If so, that would be a pain. And that's exactly what it is. Exit won't do anything that will close this terminal window. I think. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. Wait a minute. Log out. Here we go. Yeah, okay. I don't want to shut down the system. That's important distinction. Yeah. Okay, so... Nice! So there we go! It is, uh, off now. Oh, wow. This is amazing. As we can... I, I don't know why it's not showing up there, but... Yeah, I really like this blue for some reason. This is a nice blue. It would have probably made maybe that not green. Seems a bit odd to make that green. But I want to see if we can set a desktop background. You know, just like the curiosity. So that would be Style Manager again. Imagine how this would run if we had graphics acceleration. Afternoon, armor, background, dark, Barack. Barack. Like, that's probably close it. But then this one... I appear to have minimized it into the hell dimension. All right, well, uh, I guess... Oh, no, it's right there. Hey. Oh, my fucking God. You're up... It's updating in the fucking... Holy shit. I do not have words to explain how much I love this. So unnecessary. It's... Uh, there we go. Oh, my God. This is so fucking cool. So again, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Distro Hopper for putting together that package for us, because without it, we would absolutely would not have been able to get this to run on this fucking f Pentium. And lastly, I'd like to give a huge thank you to you two, because I don't know if you noticed or not, but, um, holy shit. No, the graph isn't upside down. It actually looks like that. So I would just like to give a huge thank you for reaching this milestone, because it's just... It's so fucking crazy. I know I said basically the same shit when we actually reached 420, but I just don't have words for how fucking crazy it is. Like, that's four numbers, guys. Holy shit. But gushing aside, I just wanted to say that there is a 1,000 subscriber special, or more notably a 1,024 subscriber special, which we're already late for somehow in the works. It's just... No, I, I've had I've had an idea for one for like years, but the thing is, is I can't do it because I like literally do not know how yet, and I'm trying my best to see if I can figure it out, but it's uh, it's not ready yet, and it probably won't be for at least a good while. Things happen a bit quicker than expected because of that. For the sake of transparency, I just want to say, I thought that video was gonna do shit. Like, honestly. I looked at it and I was like, well, not a lot of people seem to be interested in because it's like there weren't any other videos on the subject really at that time. And I was like, well, okay, this video's just going to do shit, but I'm going to enjoy making it and everything's going to be fine. And <laughs> which having that in mind, I did a couple of things in there I wouldn't have normally done when I do like a, a, a video, which I think will actually do well. But no, YouTube appeared to have had other things in mind when they decided, nah, this video you go ooh woo in. I'm, we're just going to recommend it to everybody on fucking Earth. So, uh, yeah, that's fun. And I believe that finally brings this project to a close. Thank you so much for watching, especially this far. Holy shit, this video is going to be like an hour and 20 minutes long. We're reaching fucking Draga 1 run times now. What the fuck? See you in a fucking month, I guess. Bye!
I could have ran on the sword for three penny and four, and it still wouldn't do that. <laughs> so, uh, huh? Now, for some of you, that might have actually sounded like they're beginning to a sponsorship read. And uh, how naive you are. The only company that would ever interact with this channel is fucking a bad dragon. Uh, 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 what sound am I even making?